In this video, we're going to learn some really valuable techniques to make your own custom motion graphics backgrounds in Fusion. Something like this, you know, something kind of subtle, nice, a little bit of motion in the background there. This is great for putting behind quotes and logos, and it's just generally very useful. I'll show you how I made this, and we'll go through some techniques so you can learn to make things that are similar that you really like. My name's Casey. I teach content creators how to make amazing things in Fusion. I even have a free video course available. There's a link in the description below. So we're going to learn how to make this background. And I also want to mention, if you find yourself needing a bunch of stuff like this, I definitely recommend checking out Motion VFX. They make some of the best templates for DaVinci Resolve that I've used, and they have a bunch of different graphics packs. One of their latest ones is this documentary pack with this really tasteful typography and titles and effects. It's really beautiful stuff. It works great with the latest versions of Resolve. They update it all the time. It even works on the iPad version of Resolve. I have a lot of their packs, like this MTuber pack has backgrounds that you can just grab and drag into your timeline. And there's this nice kind of motion background and you can open it up in the inspector in the edit page and control all the shapes and colors of all the elements and just customize this really easily. Here's another background. It's just some really nice designs here. Everything's really thoughtfully laid out and easy to control. And these guys are obviously just doing a really good job and it seems like they really care about making a quality product, which is what I really want when I get a template pack. I don't just want, you know, 5,000 templates. I want these to be really useful, really easy to use, easy to customize. They play back quickly. It's just everything you want from templates. Just so nice. So again, if you're looking for something quick where you can customize the colors and kind of use this on just about any type of video, I would definitely check out Motion VFX. They have a ton of stuff for DaVinci Resolve and we know these guys and trust them. They're really trying to make the good product and do a good job which is why we're working with them and they sponsored this video. But if you want to make something from scratch and build a simple background exactly how you want it, here are some tools to do so. In the edit page, I'll just go up here to my media pool and right click and I'll just select new fusion composition and we'll leave it at defaults and we'll just say BG for background and I'll double click on that to open it up in fusion. So the simplest, easiest way to make a background is just to use a background node grab background, drag that in, take the output of the background and connect it to media out. And boom, we have a black background. Hey, thanks everybody for watching and uh, make sure to subscribe and like it. Okay, we'll do more than that. One is we can select this background, go up here to the upper right in the inspector and change the color. So maybe we'll do purple because we did blue in the demo. Yeah, we'll do kind of a purple like that. And that gives us a solid color. The other thing we can do is instead of solid color here, we can make different kinds of gradients. I like to play with four corner because that gives us four different colors and it kind of automatically blends these together in the corners. So maybe we'll do kind of a red, more of a pinkish sort of look up there. We can do more of kind of a blue there, maybe a little more purple in that. So now we already have a little bit more dynamic of a background, looks kind of nice. But let's look at some cheap tricks to make this a little bit more dynamic. One tool that I use the heck out of is this second one right here, fast noise. You can take fast noise, drag this over here and take the output of fast noise, drag that over the output of the background and that'll make a merge node and it'll automatically connect the fast noise to the foreground. That's the green input and the background to the background, which is the yellow input of the merge. And now we have these clouds over our background it already looks a little bit more dynamic, but we can change the controls for this. If I push detail up, that looks a lot more like kind of realistic smoke but let's just keep the detail down like that and play with the scale. Push the scale to the right to make everything a little smaller, push it to the left to make it a little bigger. And one thing you can do is just push this scale up a little bit like this, and you can either seed this, which you can just take the seed and kind of push it around like that. You can see it sort of morphs, or you can automatically have this seed by pushing up the seed rate. I can push that up a little bit. And now as we play this back, Let's push that seed rate up a little more. It kind of wobbles like that. And so that's already kind of a motion background. And this is probably a little too high contrast. We can just blend this down by going into our merge right here and taking this blend parameter down. I can take this to the left, turn it all the way off, and then I'll just push it up a little bit just so we have a little bit of movement here. In my opinion, this is a really nice kind of just subtle movement to the background. It's a lot more interesting than just a solid color. Gosh, it's just so easy to do this. So we can take this kind of background we can switch over to the edit page and I can grab this background and just drag it into the timeline. And now I have this background and I can extend this as far as I want. And it's always gonna have that motion. And then I could do something like go into my effects library under titles and just grab the plain old text title, throw it over here. I can change my font and all that stuff. 
add a little drop shadow pretty easily. And now we have a pretty nice looking title. Look at this that we made from scratch. Looks professional, isn't distracting. It's just really nice. Okay. So that's super easy. Let's say we want to get a little crazier. I'll go back to my media pool, double click on this background here, and let's add kind of some tiled shapes. You can do this like so many different ways. One way is you can use the actual shapes in Fusion. So if you hit Shift Spacebar, that'll bring up this Select Tool panel here. And this lets you search for the different tools in Fusion. And so I'm gonna search for S H A P E. And that's gonna bring up all of these shape nodes. And if you haven't played with shape nodes, shape nodes are super fun. So let's just go ahead and start with a star. So S star and hit add. And what this does is it generates a star shape. If we hit one on the keyboard and I'll just open up our second viewer here, we can see a preview of this star. Now you're not gonna see a preview of the star um, unless you have Resolve Studio 18.5 or later. This is a really basic feature that they kind of added in just the latest version. Normally you'll have to connect this to a render. So S render like this, and then view that S render here on the left. So we could just do that. But if we select S star, we can control all kinds of things about how this star looks. I can push up the points, take them down. Let's do a five point star, I can adjust the depth. So I don't know, maybe just something like that. We can adjust the width and the height. Maybe I'll take this down a little bit. Let's do like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, have a little star there. And then we'll take the output of this S render and merge that over our purple background here. And now we have a star over our purple background. Yay, we did it. But we don't just want one star, we want lots of stars. So what we can do is use an effect for the shape, shift spacebar, and we want S G R I D, S grid. This is going to take any shape that we plug into it and render it as a grid of those shapes. So I'll hit enter and this will do a three by three grid by default. And we can push up the cells do six by six. There we go. That's kind of nice. And then because this is procedural, I can go back to this star and adjust the width and the height, right? Make these a little smaller. And now we have these kind of rendered on a grid like this. Again, subtle is a good idea. So let's take this merge two that we're plugging this shape stuff into, and we'll just take the blend down a little bit. So I take it all the way off and then I'll push it up until we kind of notice it and just keep it really subtle in the background. So now we have the stars over our background. It's kind of cool. But let's take the stars and let's rotate them. Let's like have them rotating in time. So I can select this star and here in the angle, I could just keyframe this from the beginning like this and then go to the end and then rotate this a little bit and that would work. So now as I play this back, these are rotating, but an easier and probably better way to do this is to not keyframe this. I'll just hit control Z a couple times and to use an expression. So I'll just select this zero here and type equals time, T-I-M-E like that. That's a really simple expression. All this is going to do is put the frame number, whatever the current frame is, into the angle here. And so it's going to slowly rotate things. It's gonna rotate each star and then that star is duplicated on the grid and then we're putting that over our background. So now we have this little kind of dynamic shape here in the background. Just a nice way to do it. And what's cool about this is that if we decide we want a different kind of shape or we wanna change this or somehow, I could say like shape, and maybe I want a polygon, so S and gone. Grab this and plug this into the grid, and we'll take the width and the height down. And now we have these hexagons. Could do the same thing with this angle equals time. And now those are rotating, and we have something that's a little bit less of a star. <laughs> with any shape, you can deselect solid and push up the border width, kind of like you do with a mask. That'll give a little different look. And there's all kinds of shape filters and everything we can do to kind of procedurally build things with shapes. This is such a cool way to do it with nodes to be able to kind of build things in steps. And then you can, you know, rather than duplicating this shape and offsetting it and all of that stuff uh, manually, it's just using a filter. So I can turn that filter off at any point. I can change things about it and it's really fast and really easy. If you wanna learn more about shapes and filters and kind of procedurally building things like this, let me know in the comments and I'll do more videos on that. So we have a pretty cool looking background here. Let's take this media out node to the right. And let's maybe add a little bit more kind of darkness to the edges. And I can do this a lot of different ways. I could just run this through something like a color corrector. I take this color corrector and just push the gain down maybe, and then add a mask. I can just grab this ellipse mask, drag that in and drag this mask onto the color corrector like this. That'll connect it to the blue input, which is always the effect mask for whatever node you connect it to. And this is just gonna tell this color corrector to only do its job inside of this mask. And what I actually want is it to be outside of the mask. So I can go over here to my mask controls and select invert, and then we'll adjust the width and the height of this mask, and we'll soften it out with this soft edge, push that out a little bit. And now this is just a little bit subtly darker on the edges. 
I can turn off this color corrector just to see how much work it's doing. Maybe I can take the gain down just a little more. It'll give this a nice little vignette that's not too over the top. And yeah, we have a cool looking background here and it's just not that much work, right? And you can make whatever you want. Let's kind of break this down. The first thing we did was make this purple background with the four corners and just the corners are just little different colors just so it's not just one solid color. And then we added that fast noise on top of it. We pushed up the seethe rate just so we have that subtle kind of blobby movement. Then we made a polygon shape and we ran it through a grid filter here and put that through a render so that we can actually composite that on top of other nodes. So we put this on top of that purple with the clouds on top and it already looks cool. Then we added the color corrector with that really soft ellipse mask that's just darkening the edges a little bit, making that nice and classy. You know what I'm saying? And again, we can use this fusion composition as a background. We'll just drag this into the edit page, trim it to how big we want, and then boom, we have our really nice background. Isn't that awesome? So easy to get something that looks nice like this, and it can be exactly what you want. So there's a way to make something custom that's maybe not as quick, at least the first time. If you want something that you can still customize, but it's definitely a lot quicker, you can check out the awesome templates from Motion VFX. That's another really nice way to get some beautiful motion graphics without a whole lot of work. There's a link to Motion VFX in the description. Make sure to check that out. And I hope this was helpful for anybody trying to learn Fusion, get their feet wet in the uh, whole custom motion graphics game. Again, if you're just diving into Fusion, make sure to check out the Fusion Survival Guide. It's a free video course. It's available also in the description. Hey, thanks for hanging out with me. There's probably some kind of joke about a background check in here. What do you think the best background check joke is? Why don't you put it in the comments? You know what I'm saying? I want to hear from you. From you. <laughs>